Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Solar Impulse 2 arrives at the Big Apple. A date is being suggested for the reuse of a SpaceX booster. Politicians jump from an airplane. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 13th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Solar Impulse 2 continues its around-the-world journey, being fueled only by solar power when it arrived at New York City's JFK International Airport at about 4 a.m. local time on Saturday morning. The arrival in New York marks the completion of its flight across the United States, which started with its arrival over San Francisco on May 24th. The most recent flight was one of its shortest at only 4 hours and 41 minutes to fly the 165 miles from the Lehigh Valley International Airport in Pennsylvania. Andre Borschberg and Bertrand Picard have been taking turns flying the airplane since its original departure from Abu Dhabi in March of 2015, and it was Borschberg at the controls upon arriving at JFK. The stops along the way after leaving the San Francisco area included Phoenix, Tulsa, Dayton, and Allentown. The next part of the journey will be the flight across the Atlantic to the European continent. We have all watched with great interest as SpaceX has successfully returned rocket boosters for landings with the intent of the boosters being reused. SpaceX founder Elon Musk tweeted last week, that the booster that had carried the FICOM-8 communications satellite into orbit and then landed safely on a floating barge in the Atlantic Ocean is now safely back in the company's hangar with the three other Falcon 9s that have been recovered. In the same tweet, Musk said that the company now plans to launch its first refurbished booster in September or October of next year. If this timing holds, that's several months beyond the May-June timeframe the company had targeted earlier this year. According to a report from Engadget, the payload for the initial second launch of a Falcon 9 has not been determined, but several potential companies have been identified, including Luxembourg-based satellite operator SES Global. After the break, Kentucky Governor takes a leap. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at arrow-news.net. The top elected official in the state of Kentucky took a big drop last week, but not in the polls. He participated in a tandem skydive with the U.S. Army Golden Knights. Governor Matt Bevan was one of 13 people to participate in the jump, which started about 13,000 feet. However, the Kentucky Today News reported that Governor Bevan had previously served in the U.S. Army, rising to the rank of captain, so it wasn't his first time to jump from an airplane. As a side note to the story about the governor, apparently other Kentucky elected officials enjoy jumping out of airplanes. A day earlier, Lieutenant Governor Jean Hampton and her husband jumped with the Golden Knights at Fort Knox in honor of their wedding anniversary. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Summer is about here and it's time to head for the surf, right? In this video, you'll get a completely new perspective of surfing. 
because the surfboard is an airplane. After these messages, Peru launches its first Earth observation satellite. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some of our interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Airbus Defense and Space has completed integration of PeruSat-1, which is Peru's first Earth observation satellite. Built in less than 24 months, it will observe Earth via a revolutionary silicon carbide optical instrument system at 70 centimeter resolution. The Commercial Aviation Alternative Fuels Initiative recently celebrated its 10th anniversary working towards sustainable jet fuels. The FAA has been involved in the program from the start and applauds what they call tremendous progress. NASA's Minority University Research and Education Project has selected two minority-serving institutions for cooperative agreement awards totaling $1 million to promote STEM subjects at the schools. Lawson State Community College and New York City College of Technology are the award recipients. A B-52H Strato Fortress aircrew from Minot Air Force Base conducted training missions from Royal Air Force Fairford last week in support of the multinational exercise Baltic 16. This operation promotes security in the Baltic region with participants from about 17 nations. The spacecraft that will perform NASA's Origin Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security, known as the Regolith Explorer mission, arrived at the Kennedy Space Center from last month. The spacecraft is being assembled and tested with a launch plan for early September. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Those of you who love aviation history are going to love this report. The Ohio General Assembly has approved $1 million to save the original Wright Brothers commercial aircraft production factory for a national park site. Built by the Wright Company in 1910 and 1911, the factory's two structures were the first in America built for airplane manufacturing. The National Aviation Heritage Alliance has been driving force in seeking to save these historic buildings. Their goal is to put the factory in the hands of the Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park where it would complete the story of the Wright brothers' invention, development, and commercialization of the airplane in Ohio. Frank Winslow, chair of the National Aviation Heritage Alliance Volunteer Board of Trustees, said in part, This funding makes it possible for the NAHA to acquire the factory and preserve them until the National Park Service can accept them. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, 
the aviation world's most comprehensive and news information resource. I believe I can fly.